أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار In the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful We begin by praising Allah We praise Him, we seek His help and we ask for His forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequences of our evil actions Whomsoever Allah guides, there is none to misguide, and whomsoever Allah lets to go astray, there is none to guide. And I testify and bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah, and He has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is the servant of Allah and His final messenger. After that, the best speech is the book of Allah, and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad and the worst of all the affairs are those matters that have been newly introduced into the religion and every matter that is newly introduced into the religion of Islam is termed as a bid'ah or an innovation and all of the innovations are misguidance all the misguidance is going astray and all the going astray is in the hellfire I'd like to welcome you all by saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh the topic that we have chosen for tonight's talk is culture or Islam. Is there a conflict between the two or are both compatible with one another? Before we go into the topic of culture or Islam, we need to ask a couple of fundamental and basic questions. How many of us see ourselves going to Jannah after we die? How many of us want to go to paradise after we die? Is there anybody who would like to try out hellfire? So since we're all looking to go to paradise, we must know the way that leads to paradise. Because if we don't know the way, we're not going to get there. You've got to know which path leads to paradise. And it is important for us to study this fundamental. Which path leads to paradise? You do things that are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that God likes. And you must realize that you're not going to go to paradise just like that, without any effort. It's not going to happen. Just like everything else in this world, you're not going to go to paradise just like that. That if I just carry on with my life in the same old, same old way that I've been doing, I will, inshallah, enter paradise. That's not how it works. You've got to work for it. And the way we work to attain paradise is to collect each and every single good deed that we can along the way. Not to miss out even the most minutest of good deeds. And to stay away from all sins. Even a minute sin we must stay away from. This is the path to paradise. And how do you define or classify a good deed? A good deed has to have two conditions for it to be recognized by the creator of the heavens and the earth as a good deed. First of all, the intention behind it has to be sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I am doing it to please Allah and secondly, it has to be a righteous act in itself. So these two conditions have to be met. It has to be a deed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, the day of judgment which is known as Yawm al Qiyamah. Yom al Akhira, also known as Yom al Hasra, the day of regrets. And why is it known as the day of regrets? Because it is a day when mankind will be in great regret. People will be in great regret. People will wish and say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that please give us a chance to go back to earn just one good deed. Just give us this time to go back and do some few little bit good deeds. But by that time it will be too late because the time is now up 
the examination of this world is over and now you have to suffer the consequences, be they good or be they bad. So it is known as the day of regrets. You will not experience a greater regret than the regret you will face on that day. And the story that is narrated to us is of a man who will go to his parents asking them to please give me just one of your good deeds. Just give me one of your good deeds. And his parents will say, we're sorry, we cannot do it. Because on that day, every man for himself, he will go to his parents and they will refuse that no, I cannot give you a small good deed. He will then go to his children and ask them, please my children, give me just one of your good deeds, just one. And the children will refuse. Because they also need their good deeds in place. Then he will go to his siblings and say, please my brothers and sisters, give me one of your good deeds. And they will refuse. Because they too need their good deeds. Then he will go to a person whom he helped to perform the wudu. A small, small good deed. He helped a man in performing the wudu. He took the, the bucket of water to help him, assist him in doing his wudu. And when he will ask that man, he will say, okay, you can take a small good deed from me. And that good deed which will be given to him will be the deciding factor between paradise and hellfire. And his life will be saved. So the basic concept that we must understand is that in your daily lives, collect each and every single good thing that you can. Even if it is saying salam to someone, may peace and blessings be on you. Even if it is helping someone to carry something, even if it is assisting someone in the most smallest and trivial of matters, do it. Because it is for the Akhirah. Because on that day of judgment, you do not want to be with those whose hearts are filled with regret. I wish I could have done more in the dunya. So this is some of the basic fundamentals of our faith, which should encourage us to re-evaluate our lifestyle and see how do we need to change things in order to work for the Akhira. Not to work for the dunya, work for the Akhira. Because this life is temporary and it will end very soon. What will last forever is the hereafter. So the priority should be there. Now coming to our topic, we talk about culture. And culture is something that is not very easy to define. It is a very abstract sort of a term. But if you were to actually give it a definition, the World Book Encyclopedia states that culture can be defined as a people's complete way of life. It consists of all the ideas, objects and ways of doing things created by the group. Culture includes beliefs, customs, language and traditions. This is the definition according to the World Book Encyclopedia. So what you eat, what you wear, what you practice, even how much chili you put in your food, this is all part of your culture. In the subcontinent, we, the Muslims of the subcontinent have been, if you go back into, into the history, our great 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 grandparents used to be Hindus at one point in time. And they were reverts to Islam. So a lot of our culture is based upon Hindu traditions and Hindu values. So although people converted to Islam, yet they still hung on to their culture. Because over here it is also part of our culture not to let go of the culture. This is also our culture. That we do not like to let go of our culture, of the belief system of our forefathers. We have a very hard time doing that. So if you look at us now, a lot of our culture is based upon the Hindu culture. And we will inshallah explore how we actually go about doing that. When you go and look at Islam, Islam is a deen. It is a complete way of life. Just a few minutes ago, I also told you the definition of culture as a complete way of life. So if culture is a complete way of life, and Islam as we know is a complete way of life, then surely you cannot follow two complete ways of life. Surely they can merge at some points, but you either follow Islam or you follow your culture. Maybe at certain points they do merge, but you've got to submit to one of them. So unfortunately today, we see that Islam has been limited to just rituals. 
It is something that you do as rituals. Not as a complete way of life. Islam will not govern my lifestyle. It will just be some, some rituals that I perform every now and then. I might pray every now and then. Not a compulsion. Every now and then is okay. I might pray every Friday. I might pray on Eid. I might do a few good things here and there. But it's not governing my lifestyle. Whatever does not suit me in Islam, I will reject it. Unfortunately, this is the state of affairs that we observe in our society today.